Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tio Know the Lust of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Michael Lover. And right now, we have just finished instituting maximum liberal propaganda into our country. And right now, we should probably do either and what is in our future views, or views of the future, but let's do the Equal Vote Act. It might surprise some, but until this moment, there was no specific protection by Parliament or legal precedent that stated unequivocally that every man and woman had a single vote, and indeed there were some conditions which prevented persons from ex exercising their vote depending upon their race. This ends today, as with the Equal Vote Act, this government puts to rest the archaic practices of discrimination that have so defined prior ministries in England, be they man or woman, of Caucasian or African heritage, or and over the uh, age of 18. Any English citizen now has the same vote as any other that they can exercise at will and see as, as they see fit during national and council elections. Very cool. As well as, and what is in our views of the future? England stands at a great precipice. One wrong step could send us over the edge and into the pet of pit of dictatorship and corruption, letting the flower of democracy wither away in the darkness. But should we tread the path with care, we could well see all our efforts rewarded and English democracy bloom in the light. This is Reginald Maudling's view of our potential futures. We are far enough along to be so close to success, but just far enough away to need to worry about the chasm still. It will not be an easy journey to reach a fully functioning democracy. It will not be a walk in the park. This last stretch will require great efforts from us and for even greater rewards, and as someone did say in the comments from the last video, apparently. Uh, with modeling, he's like, he's got the most focuses dedicated to like education, and we can get probably the best social development for academic base, I think. Uh, that's what someone said in the, last, in the comments of the last video, so that's kind of cool. But now, I guess we have to vote. Oh, we need 271, and we have 277 currently. Not bad. And we'll go and do this one too. So hopefully we'll win. 277. Support it. We need 271. So we don't have to spend too much right there. Donald Tyron. Hello. And we have three people there. Very nice. Cut down reserves. Not yet. And what are we doing with our intelligence agency? We are trying to do covert operations. And modernize the department, of course. Anything else here? Comp compromise? No, we're kind of okay right now. We might need to save some of our PP up for some of these decisions here. I mean, we're pretty good for democratization. Not bad. It could, of course, be improved. But I think we'll wait for now. Ooh, the kids born into a corrupt system. It is a rare thing that a prime minister can have something truly in common with even the lowliest of paupers. But Reginald Maudling raised a child through the dark years of England. His daughter Caroline is just one of an entire generation who grew up knowing the country at its lowest state. And there are thousands like her who are disillusioned, despondent, and out of work. Like me? The Prime Minister has personally advocated for a program to assist the youth of these troubled times, giving them access to more opportunities to better t themselves, get jobs, and escape the system which entrapped them or trapped their lives in drudgery and misery. If even if you make it up, it'll have been money well spent. Higher public, pub, higher public, higher education, more daily political power, stability, research speed. Uh, GP does cost go, but we do get more taxable population to offset that. Better academic base, research facilities, and poverty. Oh yes, please. And we do have a cup of actually kind of lukewarm coffee because I forgot about it earlier. My bad. And it's still 69. So let's get some radar stuff. Why not? Cool. Oh, why do we have so many options here now? On oh, England's status as a power. Oh, we get some more supplies soon. Very good, very good. Uh, high command stuff we could do. We can close out of that for now, but... Ministers, people have asked if England is a power anymore. I know many people in Germany, Tokyo, and Washington believe that she is on the way out. And I used to answer this by pointing out that we live in a great country with achievements of every kind. We've been in the the lead on industrial and scientific progress since James Watt and the steam engine, that we have no need to fear for temporary difficulties if we just work together. But then I realized, this we is not a small group of the upper class that guided the masses from inception. It is the people of Britain, the ones who have done the work, who have done these accomplishments. And Parliament does not represent these people. Instead, it represents only a few well-off reactionary individuals. When Parliament was the only representative of the elite, England was a minor European power. When Parliament was for every man and woman, Britain ruled the globe. If we were to reclaim any semblance of our former greatness, we must expand the vote to everyone. England shall give the people an equal vote, and a system free of corruption and fraud. There are some who say the masses are not ready, but if they are to wait in, to wait in disenfranchisement and slavery until they are deemed well and good, then they may well wait forever. The mask is truly fully off now. Very good. We like this one, too. Kids born into a corrupt system. We love it. Large gut exercises, even though Goring is probably not going to attack us. Even though, actually, off-screen, I don't know if you saw us yet, but Shona, he went to war with Bulgaria. Very weird, I know. Very weird, but whatever. The students will learn the new way. The youth have a certain amount of influence on society that often goes overlooked, namely that their beliefs are shaped in large part by the years of their early 20s, and then often set solid for life, barring some great upheaval. But, well, we can certainly use that. <clears throat> the new way. It was a term coined by... 
for Prime Minister Modeling's comprehensive series of reforms and changes to the education and political systems, encouraging public backing of democratic ideals, tolerance for different ways of life, and experimentation and a general lessening of the law, and order-focused public appeals for, of prior ministries. The children of this age will grow up in a land of tolerance and freedom of expression. It is our hope they can pass these ideals on to their own children someday, and our academic base will continue to improve. Great. We love improving our academic base. Well, what else we get here? Yeah, we can definitely close out of this one. That is good. So we need, need usually probably at least 50 to do all that stuff, which is fine. And Insurrection Oman, not interested in that for now, but that's okay. Maybe later on, maybe later on. We should probably do those guys and those guys and those guys, because we can. You never know what the Swiss are up to. And then the Clear Parliament Act. Frankly, the people don't trust Parliament at the present time, as seeing it as an almost otherworldly force that does as it pleases when it pleases, and they only get to read about it in the newspaper. The Clear Parliament Act is one of the Prime Minister's more original ideas, to be quite honest, showing the path to democracy by showing how the democratic process works to the general populace. Recordings of parliamentary sessions will be made available to the general public via the BBC, and any observer may, may dine to look upon the government and action during these sessions. It is not a perfect system, of course, but as systems go, it is certainly better than most. Oh, we have a new act to clear with that one, then. That's fine. It's good to be transparent. Usually. Sometimes you have to hide things, but transparency is always welcome. Almost always. Unless you're doing corrupt things, but the act passes. If you like to do about that, please go right ahead. That's always... Oh, look at that. So, whenever these, any act passes, this is the exact same one we get for each one, so... Oh, God. We lose even more political power. We get more stability. Macmillan's and liberal support will increase and get more political power. So, okay, not bad. If we had spent any, we basically get it back. Let's do and clear the Parliament Act as well. Um, since we're here, uh, we can probably get some of this. Bulgaria, you're at war, so we can do that. Get some rubber too, why not? We have the uh, cities for it. We can actually cut down construction spending, but we're not going to do that because it actually costs 25 political power to lower that. But the Liberal Education Act. The Liberal Education Act is somewhat ostentatiously named, it must be admitted. But accuracy is important when making your major changes that affect the general public, and this bill of reform will most certainly do, do just that. The overarching goal of the act is a fairly concise one, that inaccuracies, biases, and faults in the education system, which have been extent or extant up until this point. The actions of the coalition government in the Second World War and the portrayal, for example, will be corrected. Additionally, more funding will be given to the universities and facilities of higher education as to increase the number of trained specialists in various professions available to England. But not Wales. And that's okay. Minus 1.64 billion. Ah, that's not bad. Honestly, that's not a big hit to us, realistically. So even though, like, that's probably even worse to, like, spend more money for cities, the political power you get is really just worth it, in my opinion. Oh, we should have done other focuses first. Oh. The power we're back. Oh, we haven't finished all the stuff yet. Oh, maybe we should have waited to do some of the stuff up here first. Maybe we should have beelined down here a little bit faster. Oh, well. Oh, well. So, two... Oh, boy. It's compromise with the liberals. 3% more influence. 3% more influence. Royal party. Oh. So... We have a total of 20 plus 6 is 26. We need more than 26. We could probably get some of the royal parties to work with us. Let's try them. Them. There you go. We did. That's a lot of MPs. Holy crap. I mean, yeah, in America we have the House of Representatives, but 541? We have 435, I believe, so. But holy crap. So that's fine. We spent 50. I hope we get some 50 political power back as well. That'd be very good. But the next focus will probably be the Liberal Education Act. Yeah. Liberal Education. Uh, no more state-controlled news. Ooh, we need to get this one, and then we can do both of these. The modern media. Democratization will increase. State press with censor press. We lose even more political power. Oh, why does it have to hurt me so much? Oh, man, I really should have done other focuses first. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, man, that's not good. That's all right, though, I guess. Whatever. We have enough PP for now, so. And because we have so much PP, we're going to liberalize a little bit more. And Macmillan's support is at 0%. Nice. Speeches to the youth? We could do that. Actually, we do photo shoot with the military. Now we can close out of that one. Death of Ho Chi Minh, that's fine. High command. More loyalty. Our base is at 70%, so it's almost a perfect time to do this. Photo shoot. And it's 75%. The current loyalty is 80%. The base loyalty is now is 75. Um, we could probably just boost it up a little bit more, maybe, if we really, really wanted to. Slightly more loyalty. There you go. We'll do it one more time. Now it's 80%. That's okay. Now we gotta stop spending so much PP. Cutting down that debt. Yes, please. Cut it down. A change is in the air. 
dusk began to set over the horizon across Doomfreeze. As it painted its pastel purple color upon the sky, a band of men contemplated their next move. They were a member of one of the many Scottish resistance organizations that had formed to fight the occupation of Scotland, yet, as time had gone on, the fight that they fought had become increasingly futile. The English had gotten wise to their maneuvers. No matter what they tried, the men would always find a force readily prepared to meet them with devastating effectiveness which had sliced through their allies. These losses had taken their toll on each of the men. They knew how many they had been lost, and that many more would suffer a similar fate if they were to fight on. Their doubts were not due to a lack of motivation, but the passion was, and the passion was still very much amongst their hearts, but the reason in their heads to continue the sense of slaughter had been long since died. One by one, they came to the realization that their defiance could not be maintained. They would have to lay down their arms and retire to whatever lives they had left. But this decision was not supported by all. This can't be it. You can't let the dream die now. The fight must not end, cried out one, who looked across to the man who had just stood up with a pleading look. I'll make sure it was all that was said in a weary response as the first of the men departed. May there be peace in the north. More recruitable population factor, more stability, war support, less damage to garrisons. Very good. We love Scotland here. Just don't blow up our guys, please. And we won't try to kill you as much. Maybe a little bit. Just not nearly as much. Cool. And we should have this act done soon. Please tell me it's done soon because it takes so long. It takes so long to get done. I should have done this education stuff even faster. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Because eventually we're going to deal with the, the oil crisis and that's going to be just god awful. Oh, I, I don't want to deal with that. Supply grace is a little better. Oh man. Well, hopefully we get to 1970 first before too many more bad things happen and we can cut down the GDP because the, de the deficit is just going to explode soon enough. As is going to go. Oh, Scotland. Yay, Scotland. Yay, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 5, 7, 10, 13. Nice. And Egypt is falling apart. Very good. Hey, almost minus 2 billion. Not bad. The Act Pass is great. And we get more stability, not political power. Daily political power does go up, but we lose stability. Not bad, not bad. And let's go ahead and continue with the Liberal Education Act. 11 more days before we can actually start doing that. Oh, it takes so long. It takes so ungodly long. But I guess since we're here. No more state control news? No. Modern media. Strangely, the Royal Party never really got around to encouraging the widespread adoption of personal TVs and radios in all their years of governance. Perhaps we should be less surprised after all. They often forget to pretend that we weren't a party of the elite. But it behooves us to not acknowledge the utility of these devices. A TV can grant knowledge of the wider world's events to anyone listening, willing to listen. A radio much the same and for cheaper prices. We should have invested in ensuring that the people of England have opportunities to view all the political points available and not just which that which the government deems to be acceptable. The media apparatus will probably be happy with this as well. After all, a higher viewership is never a bad move. Usually. Unless you're in court, maybe. Maybe unless you're in court. All right, liberal education, 246, ooh, the Royal Party. I really don't want to boost him up again. Maybe we'll do the Royal Party and then get some more influence with the libs. Let's do that. And we'll actually spend some more right now, just so we can offset some of that boost to the RP, or the RP the Royal Party got. So I think that'll be okay to do. And then, no more state control news. It would be fair to say that despite our efforts to reduce government influence over the mass media, there have been some things which have escaped our notice, and amongst these items is the fact that the government owns, in part, or in totality, several of the larger, more well-read news corporations and broadcasters. While it's not a theory, in theory a bad thing, the potential for this to be misused by ourselves, let alone the other less scrupulous political parties, is quite frankly a bit unsettling. The confidence will be privatized with the exception of the EBC which shall return to its prior mandate of being an apolitical broadcaster for now. This can be used as an example to the public of our commitment to the liberal ideal of a government which is hands-off, hopefully without giving the royal party a way back in. Back on the air. Noon. A blank screen on the TV sets of England. Oh boy. Then something flickers on this class across the screen Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse reads a title. Below them, Mickey and Minnie hold up a little card reading Mickey's Gala Premiere. The last cartoon to be shown when the EBC TV service went off air in 1939, and the first to be shown on the return of EBC Today. Or EBC TV t Today. TVs were slowly becoming to be widespread after the war, picking up private broadcasters and sometimes signals from Wales and Scotland now. They're becoming extremely popular with the resurging economy, granting the people of England a little money to spend, and what they want to spend it on living like people in the United States. The EBC's main job now is to provide news and information to the new viewers of England. This news is supposed to be neutral and accurate, supposedly, to provide the facts as they are. With this honey with the views... The EBC will soon become a trusted source for the new pub viewing public. Even among those who have been more, mo been the most skeptical about the government and anything that comes out of it, mass media will better humanity and our country. For now. You never know. Speeches to the youth is okay. Hey, we got a lot more equipment, huh? Let's take a look. Do we really get more equipment? Yeah, that's better. That's hey, anti-tank is good. Anti-air, anti though. Ooh. 
Anti air, let's go up to like three, and we can lower this by. Actually, go like that. Go down by five then. Nice. I'm doing a cup of coffee or two. Nice. The free act. The free press act. It has been the policy of Prime Minister Reginald Maudling, in particular in the United England Party as an institution, that the prior restrictions on the nature and content with which politics is reported and ought to be changed. Indeed, we have greatly lessened the restrictions upon the most broadcasting networks and our influence upon them until now, up until this point, really. But it does rather fall to us to make this sort of thing official. The Free Press Act officially and permanently bans influence of politicians using the media, with grave repercussions for those caught doing so. Additionally, it prevents the government or those employed by the government from owning political media networks. With some luck, of the opposition might even listen to us, and the act, of course, passes. English is oh, rapidly improves. Very nice. Perfect. Cut or spend. Cut. Ah, uh, you know what? Screw it. Technology at this point really doesn't matter too much. We can just keep going on. And the next thing we'll do is more for industry. Minus 2.3 billion is very good until the oil crisis is probably going to smack us down. And we don't have anything else here, I believe, yet. <sighs> Whoa! Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Democratization. Oh, it passes. We need 288, and then we can do them again. 284, and just in case, we give it a day, and then compromise the libs. And 293. Not bad. Very, very good. But in the meantime, the start is something beautiful. It's a slow progress, much like gardening. You don't notice its growth by the minute or even the hour, but slowly and surely democracy is beginning to take root once more in England. Be it debates you can hear in pubs that would have been out of the question a scant few years before, or the numerous independent or minor parties seeking counsel and even parliamentary seats. You can see it in the eyes of students and the voices of up-and-coming aides. People are once more beginning to believe in democracy. This is what the UE always wanted, and thanks to Reginald Modeling, it is what we have to boast about. The beauty of a working democracy is something we need to nurture until it can survive without us. Yes, a chat with Reggie. Good, good, good. We might have more acts later on, so we got to be careful with our money still. 46 billion in debt, not bad, cut it. And then the people have our back. UE has never been the most stable of parties. Granted, we all have the common goal of opposing the corruption and ineptitude of the royal party, but the relations between our factions are nonetheless somewhat strained despite this. We've evidently been successful at our goals, for in spite of what our good friends in the opposition have alleged us of doing, and despite our own problems as a party, we've just been re-elected to government. The people have chosen what is right over promises our opponents cannot keep, and so now it falls to us to come through on our own promises. The necessary work of turning England into a nation we can be proud of and ensuring nobody interrupts that work before it is done. Good, good, good. Industry. As much as I want more research speed, we need more uh, max factories in a state. Money, 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 money. Tokyo standoff, very cool. The economy to serve the people, a chance for freedom. Helping the weak. There's quite a few here. Oh, wow, look at that. A broken but perfect system. Hmm. Democratization, democratization must be complete. Resurrect old labor. Oh, okay. A chat with Reggie. It's a bit of a delicate situation, said Macmillan, as he sat with modeling. We still have a few bills to pass, and it still needs to be ensured that we can stay on this track. But we are on this track, aren't we, Prime Ministers? Asked modeling. After all, we've gone extremely far so far. England is a more equal and democratic place than when you took office. We still have a few things to do, but you and I have made permanent change to this country, and in a few years, we'll finally have made England a democracy again. Macmillan sighed. Reggie, there's something I want to tell you. Modeling was silent. He had not expected this. For a while now, I've been thinking the day today of being party chairman is getting to me. All this fighting with the blasted elites, the constant battles, everyone trying to hamstring me, it's difficult, especially when everything around the world is so turbulent. From here on out, I'll be taking a more of a backseat role in politics. Modeling was stunned, but there's so much more to be done. Who's going to take up the fight then? Macmillan looked at Modeling. He didn't have, a say, didn't have to say a word. And Reginald didn't have to say either when he accepted. The torch of liberty has been passed. Unlike when he plays Macmillan, and spoiler alert, you kind of become a dictator. Ah, we love APCs here. Better APCs, thank you. Uh, factories, yes. Nice, that's what we love. Up next, a chance for freedom. We could do a chance for freedom. Or, we can do modern labor. Yeah, there's a lot more, there's a lot of things here. Uh, yeah, why not? An economy to serve the people. Original modeling is a man of the future. Let none say otherwise. He has, through will and dealing, led a liberal resurgence through the UE party that most thought impossible after two decades of royal party domination. Now that he has proper influence over the matter of the economy, however, he has some changes to make. The economy is an ever-changing, ever-shifting morass of opportunity and the possibility of failure. Traditionally, the goal is to ride the currents as best as the individual could, but now that their more moral man leads England, 
It shall be the goal of a government to ride the tides for the good of all. A new dawn rises, and it is a liberal one that will provide salvation to all the people of England. The cycle begins anew. Freshly re-elected Chairman Harold Macmillan publicly thanked the nation today for their faith in his administration. After four years of hard fighting against the forces of fascism and corruption in the nation, Super Mac has been lauded for his wild success in ousting German influence and his moves to unify and stabilize the nation in the wake of the Civil War. Though much criticism has been leveled his way at the supposed cheapening of English democracy during his first term, no one can know for sure if the trend will continue into the second term as Macmillan continues his crusade against those he believes to be a threat to national stability. What shall the future hold for England? You made the right choice, England. Super Mac will lead the way for now. Modern labor. Yeah, well, we could do that. Fair taxation. Fair education. Uh, and act is... Wait. Oh, we're doing an act right now? Ah, oh, the free press. Oh, that's right. We're doing a free press act. That's fine. And we need a 271. We have that, so. Cool. And let's grab some more research speed. 56 days is very nice. Modern labor. We probably want to do modern labor. Manual labor is a back-breaking task, sometimes somewhat literally, in all too many unfortunate cases. Our economy once relied upon that sort of work, but now in the modern age we are beginning the transition to something greater, something better. The manufacturing of advanced materials and goods, services like banking and tra tra trading materials, all across the globe. We even hold a surprising head start in the production of materials using computers. England moves forward with the times and shall never be stuck in the past where lords and the upper class ruled over all. Let them have their land and titles they'll have not else soon enough. Very cool. Alright, the act passes. English history is written. Oh, free press? Oh, that hurts our peepee, -pee, though. Only one a day? Oh, God, no, we have to budget this even more. Um, cool. We could probably do a Liberal Labor Act. The Liberal Labor Act is a piece of legislation designed to aid England in better exploiting the circumstances we find ourselves in. When the mines are making less money than ever and most of our income once more comes from trading across the globe as we did in the height of the empire. The act will then, when be put into effect, subsidize foreign companies seeking to invest in our markets and subsidize further the English, English companies looking to build foreign connections. With this act, we shall create enough jobs for the majority of our remaining unemployment to, if not go away entirely, then at least be mitigated significantly. It will eventually be competitive, a truly modern masterpiece of business and care. The people, however, will be the ones who get the profits. Cool, and we have nothing else here. Democratization is only at 88%. We're getting there. Fair taxation, we'll get more income. We lose political power. I don't want to lose any more political power, though. Arr. Fair education. Uh, we're trying to pass an act here, so we'll probably do a chance for freedom. Victory is a sweet nectar, and one in which you can be distracted should you sup it up too greatly. But let us not downplay the scale of our victory here and, t here and today. We won. For the second time in recent history, in a democratic election, it was the UE who emerged victorious, not the royal party and their sycophants or the madmen of the national front. We have the people to thank for this. The people will recognize as the necessity of our continued governance as a show of thanks. We shall give them what they asked for, a return to the glories of the past under the aegis of democracy. Cool. And time to vote to ooh, the royal party. We could probably do them again. Um, we need 50, literally 50. So the royal party probably is the way forward for now. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to improve their conditions here. I mean, they're not bad. We barely beat them out when we're combined here, though. But we did have elections, so we should do relatively okay, right? Right. 45 billion, not bad. 92 billion in GDP, not bad. All right, looking to the left, you could probably do that. The left was once in the political doghouse under the royal party, but with the UE growing steadily more liberal, the once outsiders seem remarkably decent allies in the current circumstances. If we throw in a few passages about granting more workers' rights and cracking down on abuses of power by bosses, we can probably get the newly reformed leftist parties on side outright. Having allies on all sides makes it far easier to pass legislation than being limited to those we cannot fully trust after all. We should be careful to not grow too reliant, though, hobbled from the once mighty powerful house, powerhouse of labor. The current leftist parties might be, but by no means does that make them any less dangerous should we double-cross them on something important. Spend. Well, that really does hurt the deficit, but we need as much PP as we can possibly get right now. So, that's still pretty good. A chance for freedom. And looking to the left, because we're not dealing with unification or sea lion. But freedom has its cost. Ooh. Relaxation. Modeling sat on his couch at 10 Downing Street inside. It had been a hard day's work, but we were now there was time to celebrate. The work had been done and things were going to be easier from now on. They felt like a he felt like a stiff drink. Modeling asked his staff for a whiskey and they brought him one out for him. When he looked over to pick up the glass, he noticed something peculiar on the label. Whiskey? What was that misspelling? He took up the bottle and looked closely. Then he found it American. His mind thought about that for a moment. 
an American, anything would be unthinkable a few years ago, let alone an expensive liquor on that sanctions list. But here it was. And doubtlessly, there would be more across the kingdom, and thanks to Mac, of course. England had a chance for a future thanks to him and Mac. One of the freedoms and plenty under liberalism. <clears throat> Not brought about by the gun, but by the pen, and that he could drink to. There's much to do still, though. Absolutely. So after this one, shake it up a little bit. I really don't want to lose political power, but if we have to. Democracy is an ideal which has long motivated United England, but unfortunately it seems that even the purest of ideals is vulnerable to threats from the inside. Opposition to our actions have been mounting from the remnant NF, who seem poised to make a resurgence not, should nothing be done about them. Meanwhile, the corporations who appreciate our economic policies are starting to get a bit big for their boots, trying to exert their influence in the political sphere. It's time that we end this charade that we will allow these, those who once ruled us with us to destroy or corrupt what we built. We have work to do. Catching up with Super Mac. It's already no said, uh, said Macmillan. <clears throat> On one hand, I've been forced from reformist head to a, a behind-the-scenes figure, and my party's pushing me to the side. I keep buying myself with less and less influence and fewer people listening to me. And I get this feeling that I could do things differently if I had the power to change things. But I can't help but look at England with pride. You're doing a good job, Reggie. We've blocked the royal party from coming to power. We're reducing corruption and those burdensome restrictions, and the fascists are fighting for their survival. I think we'll have an England that, like the one I remember, and one we had before the war. And that's all worth it. Modeling was struck by those words. Well, you know, I couldn't have done it without you, Harold. Without you, we would have been dead in the water come election time. You helped me out in those crucial early years, and even though they may not know it yet, you shaped this England as much as I did, and you have that to remember as a high point of your career. Macmillan gave a smile, perhaps so, but I'm still in Parliament. Who knows what the future may hold? Gladstone formed his government at 83. Nothing is set in stone. Oh, look at that. We actually have more than enough cities, huh? That's not good. Um... Um, there you go. We got a lot of forts. We love forts here. All over. There's no uh, something here. Oh, actually, now since we did that, we can do it. Too. There you go. Doom freeze. Nice. Construction because we can. Cool. We built little ten level ten coastal forts on the entire. Th uh. Island so far, but fair taxation, ah, if we have to. Do we really need to tax the poor so much? Yes. They don't actually own too great a percentage of the national wealth, most of which sits holed up in land value in the vaults of the aristocracy. We could cut some taxes on the more innovative businesses as well as while we're at it. Really help the English entrepreneurial spirit get going. This shouldn't be too popular with some proportions or portions of our own party, let alone the opposition, but what is the position of Prime Minister for if not to push through what needs to be done rather than sitting around and waiting for gold to fall from the sky? The people will thank us for sure, and is not that what matters when it comes time for elections? English history is written. Actually, what was that, minus 100%? 10% stability. Oh, boy. Oh, so we get more cost, but better poverty. Better poverty. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at this. And now we have a deficit. God dang it. We tried so hard. This is even before. Uh, but this will go better. Because 25 to 50, we're all down here. We get double our income uh, rate factor. And 20% more taxable population factor as well. So, oh, that hurts. A little bit of lag. That's fine. Whatever. And we're done with all this, except for this one. Cool. Fair taxation and fair education. Fair education is saying which is often headlined by the modeling government, but rarely explained in detail. Well, this time has come to actually get the process of implementing the ideal, the basics of the proposal focus around lowering the cost of educating for the average Englishman and providing bonuses to higher education institutions for the training of more teachers of all varieties. In addition, the modeling government will sponsor the building of several different new public schools across England to better off the chance for a nation to prove academically. The average person might not see much personal benefit immediately, but their children will grow up in an England where basic education is free, and perhaps that alone is worth all the effort. Nice. I decrease poverty. A toaster economist. Nice. Now that's better. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That's better. Well, until we have problems here. But whatever. Fair education. The Lower Education Cost Act. The government has set out the draft for an act set to pass Parliament sometime in the next few weeks, titled the Lower Education Costs Acts, or LECA, as a plan by the government to divert a substantial amount of funding to all aspects of education, effectively subsidizing them in return for making their prices to the general population substantially lower. For families who never sent their children to any school, let alone secondary or tertiary education, this could make all the difference in the world. Some observers have noted, however, that nowhere within the text of the act is stated where these funds shall come from. This has caused some disagreement of degree of discontent, but most are confident in the Prime Minister's ability that they will have made it a little fuss in the public. Crap. Ah. As soon as we look good, 
Oh my god. Ah. Oh. Oh, it's 2.3. Oh, come on. Annual debt interests? Oh, good lord. That is not good. As soon as we improve poverty, we just get slapped higher. Slap harder. Oh, boy. We need some more of this as well. 91%. Uh, we just need more democratization, so I'm not really sure we're going to grab that. As much as I want more civvies. Uh, regress? No, we don't need to want to regress. 3% more? Maybe that should be good enough. 94% is pretty good already, so. We could honestly probably start cutting this down a little bit more, too. I don't think... Oh! Nice. If we have an extra some extra PP, we will cut down, like, construction costs. Even though... Construction costs... It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. So. Ooh, actually, let's take a look at the act. Ooh, we need 100 PP for this. What if we did Macmillanists... And then the Liberals. No, I don't think we have enough support for this. There you go, 299. That costs so much PP. Oh my goodness. Tar targeting corporatism. Ooh. We get more stability. Less construction speed, though. Shake it up a little. It'll pay out in the future. Yeah. The Royal Party, in their typical ignorance, question the wisdom of spending so great an amount on public education. What they really mean is to ask why we should give the filthy commoners the education that they will require to better themselves. The answer is simple. Plant no seeds in a field, and you have no control over what or how much you receive from it. Plant the seeds you want in the field, nurture and water them, and you will reap the benefits from it for a lifetime and then some. The children of this generation are England's future. It's time we started treating them with care they deserve rather than dismissing them for their birth or natural abilities. Maybe one day the next Einstein will be English. Maybe. Keep dreaming, but probably not. But maybe. <laughs> maybe. So I think we're pretty much done with this stuff. Oh, Backbillion has 3% influence. Oh, what happens if we don't boost it up anymore? That's not bad, but we currently only get... Oh, we need more... Uh, we have to spend it for more PP. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, my goodness. We'll go and start construct slashing the construction budget, maybe. But, uh, let's shake it up a little bit. Despite the fact that the liberal faction of the UE leads the party, the conservative Macmillan still remain in power overall. And indeed, recently they've begun to look brook to brook some of the, our reforms internally. This is intolerable, but there may yet be a solution that doesn't involve party in fighting with a handful of old windbags. Namely, get rid of the windbags and put our people in their places. It won't please everyone, but we don't need the fig leaf of conservatism to protect us anymore. UE stands because of those who want change and not those who wish to prevent it. Can we just get the portrait of... Uh, modeling here. Targeting fascism. We might not agree with Harold Macmillan and everything, but it behooves us to listen to him when he actually has a point. What brought down the England we were trying to restore? Fascism. What corrupt and evil system had reign, free reign over our nation for almost two decades, causing many of our current problems? Fascism. And who right now sits with us on welcome in the House of Parliament? Fascists. Macmillan was right. Fascism is a disease to be combated, but we must be surgical as we remove it so as to not to destroy democracy whilst we eradicate the disease. From here we must act carefully. A change in the air. Um, it seems as if no matter what, the, uh, the occupation had been the result of a peaceful agreement or an outright war, the result would have been the same. After existing and to some extent thriving for so long, free for the control of the English, the Scottish people have grown accustomed to their newfound freedom. And unfortunately for those who now govern them, they were not going to welcome this change with open arms. Instead, the English were met with widespread lawlessness as riots swept through the streets of every major city from Glasgow to Edinburgh, Dundee to Aberdeen. All manner of people had come out to make their distress known. Even the politicians far south of the border had to take notice of Scotland's outrage. Though they started to pay more attention, the violence had begun to dissipate. By the end of the month, the civil unrest in all urban areas had ceased. For now, the riots has ended, but the discomfort, discomfort still remains. England itself has become a little more stable, even if the anger of the people still remains. However, it is an undeniable truth that the notion of independence has become slightly more out of reach, and England has once again tightened its grip over the land. May there be peace in the north. Well, for now. For now, at least. But that's not too bad. We're going pretty quickly. We'll do this one. Lower income tax. Oh, we'll get more money that way. 0.5% uh, of... That's not too bad. GDP. Our GDP wasn't hit by the, uh, the whole effects of uh, the oil crisis, which is not bad, but still could, of course, be better, but whatever. Shake it up a little. And we've got two days left. Keep improving poverty five a month. We we'll probably won't get to the next level by the end of this, but whatever. Want to be start... Talking to fascism, yeah, that's what this one. Wanted to be starting something? Things looked well on the outside, thought modeling. The undue influence in Parliament had been kicked out. Corruption was down, the military industry was under control, and the fascists had gone away. It was a great success, now we looked inward. UE was a great party, one which had suited them, him well, but it could be more, a lot more. There were still vestigial, vestigial, vestigial structures from the Royal Party reformist wing in there, and members who would not go along with what the MP wanted. This had to change. 
It was his party, wasn't it? And it was going to be the organization that would bring freedom to the land at last. It's my party and I get to choose a political direction. Nice. Fuel? Because we can. Because we could probably use that, actually. The Dirty Fellows in the National Front. The National Front is a political party descended from the hardliner faction of the Royal Party before the split that saw UE emerge along with it. But something is wrong with those words. Namely, the implication that we need to tolerate a party of open fascists existing in this new English democracy at all. It is the pleasure of the PM Maudling to announce that the fascists will no longer have free reign to act as German cat spew. They will answer for what they have done and intend to do, and the people will love us for us. The act passes. In oh. Free education, more political power, stability research, more costs, but more taxable population, academic based research and poverty all increase. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And targeting corporatism. Though socialism is undeniably incorrect on many things, we must reluctantly admit that they might have had a point on the whole corrupt corporations issue. The industrial giants and their aristocratic backers are seeking to make this newly flowered democracy one populated by their hands, and they are showing interest in buying politicians, votes, or even electoral commissioners. If our ideals to survive, we must stop this here and now. And one way or another, this is exactly what we intend to do. We remove two cities. Oh boy, that sucks. But dirty fellows first. Mac was right. Macmillan and Maudling never gotten along on a few issues, Reggie thought, specifically in regards to the fascists. Whenever the subject was brought up, Harold's expression would grow fearsome, his words terrifying and dictatorial. Thankfully, Maudling had thus kept far kept the chairman's reactionary authoritarianism in check, but the fascists were still a problem and he was going to eliminate them. Orders went out. Find the black shirts in the government wherever they were. Get their names and their positions. If they are in parliament or any public office, Maudling needs to know about it, and they would be sent to him. Modeling was going to exterminate the menace as Mac wanted too, but he was going to cut the grass to find the snakes, not salt the earth. And we have quite the choice for them. The trouble with corporatism. Modeling decided that he had quite enough of corporatism after his first term. The ill mini corporations running around buying influence in his parliament, doing all they could to reintroduce corruption to his institutions. It had to be stopped and he knew what to do about it. There would be a plan, track down the bribes, find the corrupt officials, follow the money, and identify the people making the payments. Until and then in one fell swoop, England would be rid of any undue corporate influence. And anyone who tried to do the same thing again would find the new laws and restrictions in their way. Corruption? That's not very British, but lower income tax act. The income tax has always been one of the more divisive aspects of English national policy. Yes, it works for the generating revenue, but the argument has been put forth that it stifles investments to some degree as well. UE cannot simply abolish the income tax, nor do we wish to, but there are more ways than one to skin the proverbial cat. It would reduce the income tax rate, but only for the poor elements of society and the richer persons who make a certain amount of investment in the economy over the course of the financial year. We could well gain some popularity from the policy without betraying their principles and bodies. The business community will likely complain at first, but they will see the light in time. Ah, more tax. Or cut tax. Or both. Cut and raise tax. And let's see, not dealing with this? Cool. We will pay it through trade. This will grant us new source of income worth 0.5% of our GDP. Not bad. Trade, trade is the lifeblood of England. And if the new taxation policies are implemented as stated, it will quite literally be our or lightly, our main source of governmental funds as well. Foreign companies are chewing through the hair the possibility of missing out upon the English markets, and all we have to do to get them to contribute to our society is threaten to tax their ventures into the ground. Most of the time, we wouldn't be making this threat openly, of course, and no, it is a far more practical matter to simply leave the threat hanging. By doing this, we stand to make more than a high income tax ever would in a hundred years, and will give the English people more jobs out of the deal to boot. It is a good day to be an Englishman, yes indeed. And what do we have for here? Income Tax Act. Oh, that's not good. We definitely do the Royal Party here. 246. Uh, we need about 25 people, which we can probably get with UE Macmillanists. There we go. We'll get it passed. We definitely need more money, but... 1.5. If we slash that, we lose political power. We need more PP for now. So, unfortunately, we're going to have a much bigger national debt. We were doing so well before, but what a shame. What a gigantic shame. But, a liberal economy? Liberal, once a term derided by the royal party, but nurtured in secret and kept alive despite efforts to crack down upon us, well, now we stand at the precipice of a new era, a liberal era of peace and most especially prosperity. The people and the businesses have never had it better, nor for that matter have the upper classes, though they'd never say it out loud. A liberal economy for a liberal nation that, if we are fortunate, will continue long after our own bones are not but dust in some dingy crypts. For this, we must thank Macmillan as well, for without him, we'd never gotten this far. Perhaps one day. The world will know the full story. For now, though, let us relax in the glory future which awaits our children a liberal future and our GDP growth will increase and 5% more influence the problems of ge great generals oh military austerity no we definitely need military austerity right now 
No, it doesn't help all that much, but whatever. Right, gentlemen, we are in a bit of a pickle. Bill Alexander wears a determined face as he speaks to the rest of the crowd of generals, each of them looking uh, as determined as he is. Behind them stands a mallet splattered corporal with a dented helmet and an SMLE. Now, we've got here a little classic envelopment by a simultaneous assault in three different sectors. Cloud, will you lead the attack on the right? I'll move to pin the center, and um, who are you again? Corporal Charles Chesterton, sir, 5th Battalion, 3rd Infantry, uh, at your service, sir. How the bloody heck did you get in here? This is a command bunker. Can't you see we're commanding? Well, I thought I'd deliver a message, sir. Well, we don't have time for some regimental message from a corporal right now. Can't you see we're doing important generalship here? Apologies, sir. I'll cease speaking immediately, sir. The corporal takes a step back away from the high command table, labeled as such in large red letters. Right, now, the most important decision of all, what should we name this operation? All the generals are happy to oblige. Operation Silver, Operation Hammerhead, Operation We're Finally Doing Something... Arthur Harris chimes in, Operation Bomb the Bloody Pulp out of the collabs until they look like my wife's casserole after she's had a touch too much to drink. Hmm, pithy, but a bit long, too long for a community key. The corporal hems vigorously, Bill Alexander rolls his eyes. Oh Christ, it's mother again. Right, spit it out, corporal, and make it fast. It's a government, sir. They're outside the bunker, sir. Ten grenades roll down the steps of the bunker and land underneath the table. The generals all look down in horror, but the corporal stares directly into the camera. It zooms into his face, and now for some th something completely different, explosion cut to black. I'm sorry that I'm speaking quickly. I am just trying to get... I, I want to continue exploring what this, you know, modeling has, but also to kind of finish this campaign, because there's not a whole left here, so. But a liberal economy is very nice. The giant that poisons our democracy. Oh, more political power? We lose political power. Oh, God, I don't want to lose political power. But the influence of money in politics is like a poison, slowly but surely turning even the most noblest of men and women into nothing more than string puppets of laughing businessmen. If the current crop of CEOs and well-to-do families get into their heads that they can influence a process with impunity, there will be no going back. Our first step should be addressing where the influence flows from before we try to address the matter of who is influenced. Should we succeed, then we may make the lives of the future generations far easier. Unification? More war sport? Great. And we got better rubber. We love better rubber. Let's get some better guns. Nothing says guns or improvement on guns, like giving money to corporations. Hmm. A liberal economy. And get some better cast, because we love the cast here. The giant that poisons our democracy. No more poison. No more poison. Nice. Outlaw the black shirts? Yes, please. Banning fascism is a surprisingly simple process. A bill, a vote, and a law which ends with once a dominant party of the English political landscape being rendered asunder. The benefits of this action are many, but a surprising one is a change in the manner in which the army views us. Traditionally, the army or the military establishment has always hated the ideology which ended the original U United Kingdom decades ago. Now that we've banned fascism, some of the higher ranking officers are beginning to look at us, and not the royal party, as a political group with England's best interests in mind. That passes, English history is written. We lose even more political power, but we get more income, and we lose stability. And our sport goes all down. God dang it. Yeah, we gotta keep passing stuff. GDP growth went up to 3%, 5.3. That helped out a little bit. It did help out, but ooh, it's not looking good here. I'm burning just a bunch of land forts, because we're out of things to build, so. 0.45 a day. Oh, that's so bad. But for democratization, we're close. But we're only at 97%. That's very, very close, actually. Very, very close. And then offer the fascist redemption. The National Front has many supporters, and given the efficacy of the propaganda during the years of the Royal Party rule, perhaps we shouldn't be surprised by this. Yet it is the young who will, won't wor who worry the us most, who might be prevent potentially carry on the traditions of fascism in secret. We cannot answer this with force, lest we proven to be act like the tyrants the, uh, the National Front claims us to be. No, we will offer the young and misguided opportunities to de-radicalize. We won't be successful with everyone, but we'll be successful enough to not worry about future problems. For now. The military-industrial complex? Sure, why not? The military-industrial complex of England might not be quite the joint it was back in the days of the Empire, but nonetheless, it is still a force to be reckoned with. Hawkish politicians still infest Parliament, and it wasn't uncommon for businesses with leader military leanings to lobby for certain actions or interests in government. If we were to remove the influence, it is quite possible our military might actually start becoming responsive to what England needs rather than what her suppliers need us to buy, and our military efficiency will continue to increase, and we'll lose two military factories, which is not great, but at the same time, I guess it has to be done. Which does help lower our costs a little bit, but really not by much at all. And right now, High Command, we're close to 100% still. The modeling treatment. Welcome in, Mr. Richardson. Please take a seat. How many lumps do you like in your team? The Mr. Richardson, how long have you been serving the House of Commons? 15 years? That's quite an accomplishment. 
and you kept your seat since before the Civil War. I do so wonder how you were so fortunate as to have gotten the seat. Would it be rude to wonder if it might have been that the Germans knew you from your affiliation with Mosley back in the 30s? Could it have been that? You do know the old pre-war government kept tabs on that sort of thing, don't you? We have the MI5 files. Mr. Richardson, let's stop being around the bush. You're a fascist. You work with a fascist, and you were probably as much of a traitor to the old government as you are to mine. But I'm giving you a chance. You renounce your affiliations now and work with me, and everything will be fine. Nobody has to know, otherwise you'll just have to be sent to a place that appreciates your sentiments, and I dare say that you'll be staying there for a very long time. Well, so what it'll be, Mr. Richardson? Oh, very good, sir. A wise choice, Mr. Richardson. Good day, and could you ask the next man to come in, please? And that's how you make your problems go away. Through bribes and, uh, not corruption. But through, uh, strong-arming people. Separating the business and democracy. Obviously, we cannot remove the influence of business from politics completely, and unfortunate though it may be, we do need them around to keep money flowing into our coffers, but that doesn't mean we can't have some regulations on the subject of money politics. These guidelines will be minimalistic, but hopefully they can prevent any overt conflicts of interest, namely by forcing recusal, in the case where profit could be garnered by an MP on a vote and strict limits on campaign donations otherwise. It won't prevent everything, but it'll stop the worst abuses. More influence in the party? Good. Continue the fight against corporations with recovering corporatism. Recor Recovering from corporatism. Nice. And we're done with our land doctor now. Beautiful. We we have to keep spending. We need as much PP as possible. We barely get that much anyways. At the desk. Today at work. Modeling was going to get a handle on the military industrial complex. Whoever said it was a threat to democracy was right. And England wanted it to be a democracy, so it had to get a handle on this cycle of warmongering and fraud. First step would be clean up the ranks. Several generals have been identified as accepting money or other perks in exchange for lobbying for contracts. They would have to go. Modeling signed the papers that would begin court martials against them first. Maybe they would be successful, maybe not, but they would be permitted to resign rather than face humiliation, and that would get them out of the way. Next, legal proceedings of a different type. Lawsuits against armament companies. They were bribing military officials and they were defrauding the government out of money. That was highly illegal in England and now the hammer would be coming down. He sighed. It had been an hour of work and he had to go to Buckingham to receive the new ambassador from Cuba. One day he would get the entire military industry under the government's control, but... That would have to wait for now. It had been a pretty active and accomplished day on that front. Anyway, the pen is mightier than the sword, is it not? And we have 100% democratization here in England. We have done well, my friends. We have done very well. And there goes... Iran, both in the opposition and at home. United England has been at the forefront of political reform for many of these past years, but just because we don't, we want reform doesn't mean some vipers don't exist within our ranks as well as the opposition. We will contact, contract or contact the relevant authorities to begin investigations into the rank and file of the UE, mostly to sweep up the obvious abuses and corruptions, but also to remind our membership that being a part of the governing party does not grant immunity from consequences. We said it will look good in the public's eye, that, and that never hurts a bit. Even more political power, that would be good. Support for a royal party goes down as well. Sign us up. Yes, please. Wow, we only lost... We saved 0 0.01 billion by cutting down the military spending. That ain't very much. That's really not very much. We're going to finish these guys off and then finish these guys off as well. Nice. The Fair Politics Act. The Fair Politics Act aims to reduce the amount of influence that money has on the political landscape. Not by removing it entirely, but instead by evening the playing field. To begin with, no donations of over £2,000 can be accepted to a political campaign unless it, for charitable purposes. All campaigns will receive some amount of the treasury subsidizing for basic expenses, and no politician can be in drug control or contact with the business during their term of office. With luck, we can gradually expand this act into some overarching series of rules for political conduct, preventing abuses by all involved, and establishing ironclad penalties for breaches of the act. And I'm glad we're going down this one, and because we need to get the Democratic Education Act, as well as do without the old eventually. Fair politics, huh? Well, it's fair politics for now, but happy 1971, everyone. I know it's June 5th, and we've been in this month, this year for like six months already, but whatever. It is what it is. After this, we will do the people know better. Fittingly, the final say on fascism comes down to the people who voted them in. Some perhaps thought they were the only option, others maybe were intimidated into voting for the National Front, but they're always genuine supporters indoctrinated by the ideology and those are real problems. We need to address this at the base, convince them to abandon their hateful ideology in favor of a democracy that will do right by them, not the landlords and businessmen. Very good. Can we get better artillery? Yes, we can. Improve jet casts? Yes, please. Four billion. Oh, that hurts so much. What do we have here? Next batch of equipment. Very good. Very, very good. How's the world doing? Eh. Wow. The Far Eastern Soviets Republic under Soblin versus Boris Yeltsin. Wow. 
Well, let's see. You guys have no manpower, and you guys have... They're probably going to win. 94 divisions versus 31. Oh, Soblin, you could have won. You could have won, but... You just don't have the industry for it. The people do know better, though. Uh, infantry anti-tank. Very good. Net spending. 4 billion. At least went down slightly. And over here... Ooh... I don't think we can get 70 here, can we? Oh, we can't. We'll do the liberals next. Oh, we have no more PP. Ah, oh, that sucks. Yeah. Oh, God, this is so bad. This is so bad. 0.57, that's not good. The people know better. The De Democratic Education Act, I would like to do, but out with the old. First things first, we should address the matter of the many UE MPs being, well, crotchety old men who were aging when the Second World War was going on, let alone the Civil War. Did men having too much power for too long is half of what caused things to get to this bad in the first place? Naturally, we cannot just remove MPs altogether, but we can lessen their authority and the scope of their duties in cabinet. Replacing the party whips would be a good start. The Macmillanists will rant and rave, but in the end, it is our party now, not theirs. And more support for us is good. Yeah, this hurts our PP so much. Oh my goodness. People know better? Good. Just keep spending PP. PP, 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 PP. Backstab the conservatives. I guess if we have to. When you're about to do something terrible to a friend for their own good, it's best to do it quickly and with minimal, minimal fuss. But for that, we need to list names and replacements in all in order so the entire operation can be over in just 24 hours at the max. To get these lists, it will be a job for our junior MPs, the ones below suspicion, who will also be the ones filling in most of the positions about to suddenly become vacant. We want this to go up without hitch, and that means planning. Lots and lots of planning, because if you're not planning, you're planning to fail. 4.05 billion. Oh, boy. Open democracy. Well, hopefully we get more political power, but I kind of doubt we will. We'll probably lose some more. Oh. So for now, he has no support, and we're at 100%, so we can probably close out of that as, as well. And there goes those guys. High command is very loyal and uh, pretty efficient, too. Not bad. Not bad. 57%. Not bad. Stumbling blocks. There is a conservative wing in the UE party, moderate reformists, who have nothing on principle against far-reaching democratization, but they still hesitate. They cry wait when we cry go. They cr yell stop if we cry wait. And if we cry stop, they will never move again. They have to go. More liberal members shall take their place. These last reminders of a darker age must be removed. And a new UE shall take their place. One which is more receptive to the needs and desires of the English people, and one that moves ahead with speed and fearlessness. But how? But how? Because we're going to backstab people. Hit and run. Approach to the left. Oh, we get more political power? Good. The left resistance represented the worst of the English leftist political spectrum, madmen and radicals who wanted a revolution of blood for a foolish cause. It is fitting that they were mostly defeated with that madman sterling around the traitor Auchinleck. Yet political restrictions on the left don't merely extend to communists, but to the old labor remnants as well, who are unlikely to have done anything too treasonous. Perhaps if we offer them clemency, we might find allies more approachable to our reforms. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Recon. Guess we like recon. Finally, advanced artillery. Spend. Oh, if we didn't spend, we could... Basically, spending more means $4 billion more dollars in terms of deficit. People must be screaming at... Uh, not Macmillan, but like modeling. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Ooh, the passes. We lose even more political power. God dang it. Universal voting with support disenfranchised? Ah. The democratic education. I want to get this one done as fast as possible so we can have time for all this stuff too. So, despite our failures in fully dealing with a fascist problem, there are yet remains a long-term solution. People learn things best at a young age, and that is where we shall spread our message of democracy the most. The Democratic Education Act will ensure that schools across the country address the realities of England's past and interactions with fascist nations and fascism itself. The crimes and corruption will be laid bare, their treachery revealed, their atrocities examined in exquisite detail. Let our children know the virtues of democracy by seeing for themselves the alternative. Can we do that one? Cool. <coughs> God, I hope we can do well, though. I really hope we can do well. <coughs> we need as much PP as possible. The oil crisis. I wish there was a way we can lessen the oil crisis effects. Like, can we not, like, drill in the North Sea? Which could be contention between us and, you know, the Germans. <coughs> But someday, I'm pretty sure England, when if and when Tino 2 comes out, there'll be more stuff to do, so. At least we get more American equipment. That's nice. I'm going to bring up a lot of ports. Oh, Yorkshire, Yorkshire, whatever it is. Good. And we will approach the left next. Oh, there's, a, oh, there's another act after that. Oh, don't, 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 don't,
Please, 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 please. Oh my god. Uh, we might have to cheat for PP because I, I don't care. I want to make sure we do well. I'll play this as fair as I possibly can, but... That's barely enough support. Because we got to save some of our PP too. Oh, 108, 198, and 205. Oh my goodness. 274 out of 271. Jesus Christ. A hit and run. What we are about to do is not a kind act. It is not the act of friends who work beside each other for years. History will not look kindly upon this. It will look upon it as necessary, though. In one meeting, we will remove all the prominent Macmillanists from their posts and appoint new, loyal, liberal members of the party in their stead. If you like your brothers, please go ahead. Perhaps one day they may forgive us. Perhaps one day we may forgive ourselves. This is so bad trying to, like, get things passed with them. Which is obviously not a good idea to backstab them when we're doing this, but whatever. And we're out of fuel. Um, actually, yeah, that's fine, whatever. Oh, that's not good. At least we get some more PP here, but still. Hit and run. A new Democratic Foundation. Oh, let's get one first. A rose will not bloom in a garden overgrown with weeds. The lingering tendrils of the old collaborators' fascism and corporatism, also to the very idea of a diverse dem democratic polity, have been uprooted from England, leaving fertile soil for the democracy that we strive to become, the silent majority. Modeling always had a suspicion about this. That's why he command commissioned the poll, and what he was looking at in front of him seemed to prove him right. One may declare England to be a conservative country based on its government. For the longest time, it was a one-party state only catering to the elite and the rich. It was highly regressive in pretty much every aspect, and the furthest left was Modeling and the UE party, but that was only the government. Modeling knew that the government wasn't representative, and he felt that there were a number of people who were significantly more left than the government currently represented, so he made the poll. He was correct. There were a great number of voters who weren't quite socialist, but they weren't re represented in Parliament either. That opened up an enormous opportunity. If one was to sweep up these center-left voters, they could well open up a path to a massive majority in the next election. The numbers don't lie. Yeah, the numbers don't lie. We more pee-pee. I will add four billion to the debt every single year if we have to, to get more political power. <laughs> and we got, we're, we're working on one thing here. Just one thing. Oh, we have 20 more days for that, so after we do that, we will do hit and run. And then we gotta wait to do an act for support because we still have the act in progress, so. Ooh, the blow of state. Oh boy. We have more than enough manpower though. And how much are we spending on the military anyways? Engineer companies are nice. We are spending the least on the military. Like holy crap, less than three billion compared to everything else. Oh baby boy. But the act for support. A simple piece of legislation it is, but the document sitting before Prime Minister Modeling is a single greatest leap forward for English politics in 20 years. It unbans the Labour Party of old, should they be willing to renounce commun communism and revolutionary socialism, that is. Once returned, these leftist parties will cease causing civil difficulty for the government and offer their support to the stabilization and maintenance of England's future. One good deed does not outweigh years of sins, but it is a start, and we have over 100 billion in terms of GDP, which is nice. That looks good. Looks very good. Oh, okay. So we saw this. We we got that back. Okay. So the thing passes. English history is written. Do we not get any benefits for, for free education? Oh, that seems kind of boring. What? Well, all right. I don't know if we'll get this one done. An act for support. A blow of state. It would be quick, shocking, bold, risky, but it would get the job done. Several more Macmillan's members of Parliament have been identified. They were highly influential members and in positions that held a lot of sway, and they were gumming up the works they had to be removed. The plan was extremely simple. The PM would write to them, demand their immediate resignations, that they were getting old and new people would need to replace them. People that were more liberal than their predecessors, and in more in tune with what the Prime Minister wanted. But the risks were incalculable. But it would secure the liberal grip on the party forevermore, and that was well worth it. One must remember what Himmler thought of Reggie. Um, we could do it. I'm going to wait just a little bit more. Wow. There's a lot more authoritarian democracy. <sighs> Massacre. I want to get some more support, because now we'll lose 10. I want to get maybe at least 90-ish for PP first before we do anything else, just because I want to make sure we can pass this as well. The party splits. Ooh, that's not good. The new Magna Carta. Oh, there's another one after that. <sighs> not good. Uh, go and do that one. That's fine. Special forces are nice. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, uh, I don't want to use console commands, but I will use them if we have to. Uh, the party splits. Nobody can endure everything, and the last straw of the proverbial camel's back is broken for the Macmillanist conservative wing of UE. Our party, once united, is now onto two separate and distinct groups, but this time it is the liberals who are the greater power of the two. We have enough support for that this will not overtly affect our governance, and perhaps we can even point to it as a demonstration of our commitment to the democracy we are busily restoring. It is a necessity, though a regrettable one. 
Ooh, a moment in your t through time. Four point seven one billion. Jesus Christ. That's enough. Okay, we we can save some of our PP. That's good. We can do the party split. That's fine. We get more support for us. Uh, the numbers don't change. Here. 108 versus 198 versus 205. 275. With us working with the Royal Party, it doesn't seem really right, but I don't care. We got that one done, which is great. The new Magna Carta. There's one thing Reginald Modeling can do well that none deny its market something to the people. The new Magna Carta is no exception to this. Created in the bowels of our party HQ, the document is actually a rather simple one for what it is talked up. What is nigh revolutionary about the document in the modern political era is that rather than increase the amount of governmental power certain offices possess, the new Magna Carta gives more power to the democratically elected offices, both the parliament and to the judiciary, and importantly to the local councils. That did a little bit more this time, okay. Even if we got rid of the military spending, construction spending just so much. A moment of your time. The party will split irreconcilably. Modeling supporters and the Macmillanists were no longer talking with each other. The liberals uh, <clears throat> believe Macmillanists were too stuck in the past. The Macmillanists have been tired of the liberals and modeling and abusing them for so long. For United England Party, it was really anything but. But not in voting. Every time a bill needed to be passed by the PM, both sides got together and passed it. They still sat on the same benches and they would still identify themselves with the party label. This peculiar situation has one explanation. Despite their hatred of each other, there is still a common goal between them. Both sides were close to a democratic England. They needed to only stay together for a bit, a little bit, and they could get the bills they needed to pass. Then they could be rid of each other forever, just as Modeling wanted it to be. We just need a little bit more patience. Oof. So bad, man. By this, we're getting some PP now. That's good. We're getting more PP for this. So we can do the new Magna Carta. Oh, God. Oh, don't tell me there's another act after this. Because we have a couple more here to do as well. Helping the weak. Oh, poverty will improve. That's good. Add more to the debt, which is fine. Whatever. Liberals will increase more support. Change the popularity of liberal democracy is not bad either. But happy 1972, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Oh, my goodness. We have two weeks left for this. Oh, but... Oh, that's not good. Military police. Eh, time doesn't really matter. Just keep going on for now, then. Uh, can we build up our city some more? No. Nuclear stuff? Yes. Sure, why not? A nuclear London? Oh, and new Russian Republic. The act passes. English history is written. Acceptable safety regulations, trade unions, eight hour workday, social democracy party would now be called the Labour Party. It's more social democracy, alright. The new Magna Carta. Hey, we got a hundred political power, but helping the weak. The Royal Party is truly an insidious organization. They don't merely rely on the old methods of carrying favor with the voters, but instead actively seeking out downtrodden demographics and try to pin the blame for the situation on us, ignoring the fact that they were in power for 20 years and caused most of the current problems. But we must not lash out against the misguided. No, we must educate them instead. Heal them, save them from what ailments they possess. Then they will know the truth of whom they shall, shall help whom. Nice. Just work with the Royal Party and we got them. We can do another act as well, so we're pretty good now. We're going to keep steamrolling on. Where was the RP? 20 years of government, 20 years of promises, 20 years of failures. What can be said of the royal party, really, besides the fact that they sold their nation to the wolves of Germany and grew fat off the scraps of England's carcass? Where was the royal party when the Germans searched through your homes? Where was the royal party when your children starved? Where were the royal party when they were shut, standing at the beck and call of Germany? That's where. Oh, and now we have more social democracy. Um, this might be a little glitched, because all we have is liberal democracy and Rab Butler. So... It's very weird. Yeah. And if, we are very royal party right now. Wow. Aid for the poor, though. There are many people in England suffering right now. Those that have been constantly been ignored, stepped over, and downright abused by the system. We could offer them economic aid, sure, but what if we told them who was really stepping on them? We know the royal party are a group of elitist dudes. They were part of... We were part of them for years, of course. <clears throat> Sure, they try to put on a respectable face today, but we know what they really think, and what they've done from the early days of the occupation to Cable Street to the Civil War even to last week. 
We'll start gathering all the dirt we can find in the royal party, records, private conversations, MI5 files, everything. Then we reveal it all to the public. Then the poor and the suffering will realize what the royal party is. Really is. The first step towards improving situations is to make smart decisions and we'll ensure every Englander votes with care when they step into the ballot box. Everyone generates trash and it's time to take it out. Where's the royal party today? The Royal Party is now a mockery of the very name. A party which hasn't been able to win either fair election it participated in and has been reduced to a mockery in the newspapers. They lurk in the shadows denying responsibility for their own mistakes and accusing us of crimes that w were theirs. Never do they think of the people they could help. They think merely of power and what they sh might do with it when seized. They discuss all decent-minded people. And at this point, like I said, research doesn't really matter that much, so. We're going to get it passed, my friends. What is in the RP? What is the membership of the Royal Party, you ask? Why, only the most ruthless band of criminals, crackpots, and corrupt MPs this side of the English Channel. The moderates have been long weeded out by the ruthless men. The few with any commitment to democracy absorbed into the UE when it formed and fewer still into our own ranks. There's no salvaging the poor souls who remain under the Royal name in the House of Parliament. No, no chance whatsoever. Do we have to pass another act here? If we don't have to, I might screw this up. I might really screw this up here. But... The act passes. English. Oh, whoa! Okay, wow. We get way more stability and political power that way. Whoa. Where do we cut this? We can actually cut this down then. Nice. Now we get 0.3 political power every single day. It is what it is. It's fine. We just get a massive chunk of PP. What is in the RP? Very good. Have you heard of the crimes? I have. If you want to stick something something to stick, then find out what they actually did and merely let it, let logical conclusions do the rest. People won't believe a little lie, but if we don't directly say what it we think the Royal Party did over the years, it'll have all the more poignant an effect. For example, we know the Royal Party had the leaders of the 1953 uprising executed. Who's to say that they didn't have the other leaders perish in unfortunate circumstances? Or the corruption that we all know they partook in? Perhaps all those ill-paved roads could have been used the funding? It is merely a thought, of course. A uh, mere thought. Actually, if we cut down military spending even more, hmm. What if we did that? Oh, minus 3.2 billion? Not bad. The final step in democratization. Those parties which threaten democracy by their existence are no more, either reduced into nothing by virtue of what they did or banned outright. It is time, then, for us to create legitimate alternatives that the people might want to elect for the most trying possibility in all of democracy. That we might not get re-elected. For now, let us allow the resurrection of the old Labour Party. We can trust they appreciate the seriousness of the situation at any rate, and they will do. And they do hate fascism as much as the next man. They will do. They all do. Very good. Nice. We're cutting it down again. Democratization must be more than 90% and get even more. The end of the road? Nice. Dawn. Everything was masterful thought modeling. Everything had been time for maximum effect. This address would be the first thing on Prime, in, on Prime TV. The... Or Prime Time TV. The radio will carry it as well. The next day would be the morning news show. Surrogates have been recruited to go out to everywhere in the press and promote the findings. It would be a full press offensive. There was plenty of nasty information found about the royal party. Did anyone expect there to not be? You don't collaborate with the Nazis for 20 years without doing some despicable things, and being the unashamed party of that rich and elite wasn't exactly a populist move then. There were the darned lists or lies they had told. It had been all gathered into a series of reports that were about to go out after the speech. Maudling checked it again, making sure it was good. He would have had to hit every note for maximum effect. To catch a RP off guard, to discredit them in the eyes of the public, and to ensure this abomination would never rise again. Sunlight was the best of this effectant. Maudling thought, as the cameraman gave them the signal they were about to go live. Good evening. Resurrect old labor. There was a time in which it was bad to be labeled a liberal, let alone a leftist in England. Yet we promised those in hiding that the days of persecution were over. Now that we have delivered on that, and we can begin to see the flower of democracy fully unfold. Labor was many things, a rival and an opponent, yes, but never our enemy. We can trust them, we can work with them. And perhaps most importantly, we know that should we lose to them the next election, they will not bring down this edifice we have created. Most likely, probably not. But you never know. 53 billion, the end of the road. Oh boy, it was really going to happen. England was going to become a democracy, one where the weak need not fear the strong, where everyone could be free to support what they he wanted. Well, not quite yet, thought Maudling. There were still a few things to do, highly important and things that would ensure democracy would truly exist in England, and he had the paperwork to do so right here. He took it out and went to work. A few pages and a few signatures. That's all it took. Now there were a, few, a lot fewer restrictions on political organizations. They could begin organizing and electing their chosen members to public office, and they would be loyal to him for the immediate and crucial first part. The left was now black, and the diverse political ecosystem could exist once more. No, Now one could truly call us a democracy by banning fascism.
Cool. A broken but perfect system. We're not a perfect system, or nation. Hard though it is to admit, we have poverty and corruption, yes, but even callousness of government on occasion. But we are a democracy. The people can sleep knowing they can judge us on merit rather than fear the ballot box. For we are committed to their rights when all others are not. It has taken many years to reach this point, but perhaps now is a better time than never. Long live Britain, and God save the king. Why is that G lowercase? Oh my goodness. Return to the reds. A, a sea of red flags. Chance of support <clears throat> of the working class and talk of unionization, Work workers' rights, and a strong welfare state. It is a scene that only one would expect to see in the old newsreel footage of pre war England. But it is not. It is happening at this moment in a conference hall in London. The left has taken advantage of the lessened restrictions to finally reorganize itself. Extreme parties are still cracking down upon it. But there's always been a segment of the population that still believed in the struggle for the working class. The party works with the government now, sure, but later on. It'll make a new path of itself to follow in the steps of the socially democratic Labour Party of old. As the leaders get on stage, come on stage, the crowd cheers them. Before the event officially opens, a song is played, everyone stands up and begins to sing, the people's flag is deepest red. Cool. Mine's Rebellion? We're doing... Cut it more down. Cut it. Cut it. How far can we go? We have enough PP for this, though. So. Oh, trade was cancelled. Oh, because we don't have enough C. Oh, we... Oh, maybe cut that a bit too much. Uh... Eh. Best way to cancel trade? Whatever. Hope and glory. That was it, wasn't it? It sure didn't feel any different at first, thought modeling. But as the days went on, he could feel it. Things had changed. England was a democracy as free as one could find anywhere else in the world. His dream had been accomplished, and Max Wildest had come true as well. How did he get here? The one man in the royal party with the balls to stand up to the rest of the organization, the independent, who dragged his island kicking and screaming from a single party oligarchy to a free democracy, and yet, the man who had to rely on Macmillan's protection for most of the time in Parliament, the man who served as the Shadowmaster's puppet for most of the time as PM, and the man who betrayed his friends in the war, and the man who betrayed his party after that was it really worth the cost but did it matter was done was done and one couldn't argue with the results they had the right to criticize him for what he did now the restrictions on his speech were lifted after all and no matter what people thought of reggie or what reggie thought of himself he'd still be the one who freed the island and showed him them a future free of disaster and oppression of the past and that's and that future of a glorious britain was well worth it in the end god who made thee mighty take thee mightier yet nice you e liberal party becomes the ruling party and that's it for our little England. Or really United Kingdom, but really just Great Britain. I'm hoping we can cut this down just a little bit more. Just a little bit more, please. It's minus 8 billion. Please, come on. But, yeah. Ah, we finally get his portrait. Finally. He's been on the thumbnail for all three episodes here. But we finally get him as a portrait. Finally, finally, finally. I wonder when this is going to happen. But if you'd like to read about him, please go right ahead. How close were we to getting this stuff done, too? 3.2. This was barely going up. Agriculture was going up a little bit. Oh, let's cut that down, too. Cut that down. Uh, I didn't cut down that much, but that's fine, whatever. Cool, and I want to finish up with this. Oh, poverty's going much better. Industrial equipment's very nice, it's getting there. Cool, we were close for the... Oh, we were so close to getting from political interference to the professional army. We are so close, but regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this entire campaign, because United England, with both Macmillan, as well as modeling, were a lot of fun. So if you liked it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great rest of your day.